What's going on everyone? I'm the OP Jolison. Today I'm building around Choice Band Beware for Sword and Shield OU. Then I will be testing out the team on the Pokemon Showdown ladder. Basically what Beware does is it takes physical hits due to its ability Fluffy. Then it hits back very hard with its dual stab as well as Earthquake. Unfortunately it doesn't get Fire Punch. I thought it did when I was building the set but I settled for Darkest Lariat as a way to hit Air Balloon Age Slash because that's able to take all of the other three attacks. The reason I would have preferred Fire Punch is because it's able to also cover the Corviknight switch in, but I guess close combat is stronger against Corviknight anyway. It just would have been a little bit less prediction reliant, but I think we'll be good in that regard. We obviously have max attack adamant. Enough speed for Amanda Buzz just because I don't want to get knocked off before I hit them, and then the rest in HP of course. So Ghost types are really annoying for this mod just because it walls the dual stab and you have to darkest lariat, so what I want to do is have a Mon that actively threatens opposing ghosts, so... A dark type or a ghost type of my own would be very good. Ideally a fast one, because a lot of ghosts are very fast, like Dragapult for instance, Gengar... Those are really fast Pokemon, so... Actually, now that I say that, a Gengar of my own wouldn't be bad. I could run like Scarf, and then run Trick to cripple opposing walls as well. So say for instance Gengar isn't very good in the matchup, I can at least cripple something with it. Not my worst idea, but let's see what else would be an option. Scarf Hydreigon could be cool. I guess the benefit of that would be you turning against Clef. But the problem with that scenario is Clef gets to protect the scout our move anyway. Although would they? Because they don't necessarily know I'm locked in, but I don't think that's something I want to mess around with. I would rather just have the immediate presence of Gengar's trick. So let's go ahead and do that right here with Shadow Ball, Sludge Wave. I'll go ahead and run... I'm not scared of Corviknight, I'm gonna go Focus Blast instead of Thunderbolt. I would rather hit like Ferrothorn, make sure that Beware doesn't have to take close combat drops or Rocky Helmet or Iron Barbs, and then obviously Trick. We'll go ahead and make it max special attack. Timid Nature and move on. So now we have both of our choice locked Pokemon. From here, Hazard Control would be cool just to help keep our offensive guys healthy, but Beware doesn't really care about Stealth Rocks, and we can't absorb T-Specs with Gengar because Levitate is not in the game. Well, not on Gengar anymore. <laughs> it is very much in the game, but I think that Hazard Control still could be useful for Spikes. Let's come back to that. What else do I need right now offensively? I think that something to check Scarf Dragapult would be very good. Something that could take like a Scarf Shadow Ball or Drago and Revenge it would be very nice right here, so... Tyranitar could be good, Togekiss. I guess if I want to run a little bit more of a Ferelmon that I just have to keep healthy, the Zero Aura could be the way to go. I kind of like the speed tier on it, being able to revenge like Specs as well, but Gengar can also do that. I guess the problem is Gengar locking one move can give them openings that I wouldn't like, so I'll add Life Orb Zero right here just to have a wall breaker that isn't locked into one move necessarily. And I'll just make it four attacks, Plasma Fists, Knock Off, Close Combat. I think Knock Off is really good against... Dragapult. I would rather have it over player off just because I don't want to miss, I think. And then we'll go Grass Knot, of course. Make it like max attack, max speed. Minus spare death nature because I do have the Grass Knot. And then put the four in special attack. And I believe that will be the offensive course. So now let's start adding some bulk. One thing that I notice is the team gets 6-0'd by Cinderace. This has Fluffy, which if you didn't know makes fire type moves to double the damage. So... Cinderace's Pyro Ball is a problem. Now, I don't actually know whether it works, like, because if they're using a physical fire move, it's just doing neutral damage. I don't think it does, right? If they're hitting me with a fire move, the fluffy ability doesn't go into factor, I'm pretty sure, so... That's really scary. Also, I don't even think Pyro Ball's a contact move, so... It doesn't even matter against Cinderace, but... I need something for that, Mon. I think... Something offensively to check it and a defensive check would be very good. So regarding defensive checks, stealth rockers that are able to beat it are Seismitoad, Hippowdon, and Komo'o. I think Komo'o providing me with a more stable ghost immunity than Beware would be very good. Because Beware is offensive, I need to keep it healthy. I don't want to risk switching it into Shadow Balls, right? Because a lot of the Pokemon that would click Shadow Ball, like Dragapult and Gengar, would have secondary moves to be able to hit Beware, like Draco or Sludge Wave. So I think that Komo'o... While it can also take a lot of damage from Draco and Sludge Wave, it's a little bit less risky. Let's go ahead and run Stealth Rocks, Body Press, Earthquake, and Iron Defense on it. 
We'll of course make it leftovers and yeah, I'll just run this spread with like 200 defense and enough speed for age slash. Although this could be good too, like running 192 and then running 222 speed tier because Bandit Tyranitar runs max speed, I'm pretty sure, and that's 221. So I guess we'll do this. I don't think the little bit of defense is going to make too big of a difference anyway. And then we'll go minus special attack. And there's our ghost immunity and stealth rocker. Okay, cool. So I love that. Ground types are a problem though. Like, if I ran into like Bandit Drill under sand, I would lose automatically because Gengar doesn't outspeed that, even if it's adamant. So, what can I do about that? Hmm. I guess the easiest solution is Corviknight for the Defogger, which I'm not gonna hesitate on. I think Corviknight is the move to make here. And then, whatever this last offensive guy is, it has to be able to beat Cinderace because. I need to not only rely on Komo'o, because if this gets Zen Headbutt to it KO'd, everybody else is just going to lose, right? Like Sucker Punch. This has to take a bit of damage to get put in range of Sucker Punch, but between Hazards and Life Orb, that's not going to be very hard for the opponent to do. So yeah, I need to add something that can beat Cinderace as the last Mon. I'll make this Iron Head. I did know that I want a Drill check, but if they're locked into one move, it's fine. I'm not scared of anything other than Bandit Drill. Like Life Orb Drill, Komo'o can take two hits from. And then we'll go U-turn, defog, roost, make it max bidef because I really want a Kyurem check. And then yeah, one slot left. What do I want to do with that slot? Should I put the 30 IVs in here for opposing Corviknight? Hmm. So, regarding Corviknight, the two Pokemon, I mean, regarding Cinderace, the two Pokemon that I've had the most success with encountering Cinderace offensively are Primarina and... Crawdont. Those two have been amazing for me ever since the Libero got released because they just completely countered them on. Unless you run into Gunk Shot. Gunk Shot is the big issue, so I think Crawdont is probably fine. I have more physical offense on the team, but I still think Crawdont's ability to Sword to Dance is going to be more valuable than like Sub Combine here. Because Aqua Jet Priority is so good as well, and that makes it even more reliable. Yeah, we'll go Crawdont on this team. I think that's definitely the better fit. I would run like uh, Primarina on more of like a balance looking team as a like a weight of wall break opposing balance, but this team is really offensive and I think Crowdon's just gonna add to that offense better. Let's go ahead and run Swords Dance, Crab Hammer, Knock Off, and hmm, I guess Aqua Jet, right? We'll go Life Orb and then I'll run like Max Attack. Enough speed for, I guess, max, because Komo'o, and then 4 in HP. Adamant nature, and I believe that will be the team, so let's go ahead and get a game. So I have a game right here, my opponent has hyper offense. I've played a few games with the team now, and the team definitely functions well, it just has a few glaring weaknesses, and despite these two being on the team, Cinderace I've found is just still a gigantic problem, right? Because it gets Zen Headbutt plus High Jump Kick, so I can't really pivot these guys in, but... I think right here, what I want to do against the Grimmsnarl lead... Well, the thing is, who's the Hazard Setter? They have a Jirachi. I don't know, like... I could lead Gengar and Sludge Wave, because Grimmsnarl typically doesn't run Dark moves. Yeah, if they have a Dark move, that's really bad, but I don't think they will. Like, I'm just gonna Sludge Wave here. They might go hard into Toxapex, but yeah, they're gonna screen. I'm gonna Sludge Wave again, actually. I was about to cancel it, but I, w I wasn't really in the mood for that. Let's just go ahead and go Beware, I want to say. Beware isn't a bad play because they don't have Reflect up, but... Hmm. If I want to beat Cloyster, this has to be at full, actually, I realize, because it's my Scarf that outspeeds Cloyster. So I think the best thing to do here is go Corviknight first on the Toxic and just get rid of that screen immediately as they go for Scald. The thing is, they can just sit here and do that, so I have to kind of figure that out myself. They do get the burn. The thing is, they're losing more moves here, so I don't know what they're, whether they or not they want to stay in. We do get them on the switch, which is really good for me. Allows me to get this in, and I want to say just get up rocks. Rocks are going to be what opens up the door for my offensive guys. Um, that's not really too bad for me. I can just body press and then revenge you using Zeroera's hit. Do you have Psychic though, or Psy Shock? That's, oh, but I left Psychic too, okay. I honestly did not think I would. Alright, perfect. And now I can go to this and click Knock Off, and that should pick up the KO. 
good. Okay, I needed that too. And now we're in a really commanding position because like they have to go to either Grim Snarl and set up a screen or this to I guess click Sucker Punch. I think it's bulk up though, and I don't want it bulking up here because my Kamoa is dead. So they opt for Pyro Ball. Okay, okay, I see how to win. Yeah, I see what to do here. We are going to suck this. Yeah, obviously they would sucker punch right now. They're going to go for Pyro Ball again. Oh, they actually opted to exchange hazards. Does that put Gengar in range of um, Cloisters plus two Adam and Dice Shard? I don't think it does. Yep, it doesn't. Okay, so it's still going to live. That was jolly, obviously, but I know the calc will allow me to live regardless. We're going to make this play here and... Basically, I don't think there's a way I list a Pulti Geist as long as I have Aqua Jet, so I think I win. I can Earthquake through this. Don't immediately burn me, because then you're gonna live. Okay, Toxics, whatever, I don't care about that. And... Yeah, as long as Gengar does not get crit by Cloyster, I win this game. I have to hard switch it in. I don't die to plus two Ice Shard. If I get flinched or crit, I lose, but if I don't, then I win. They were hoping I wasn't Scarf, okay. Well, I am, dude, so, um, tough luck. I mean, he can't do anything here. I have Aqua Jet, I have Zero Aura. If he takes forever, I'm just gonna cut to the next game. He is gonna try Pulte, guys. Sure, dude. Let's do this. I don't even think you outspeed me, yeah. Okay. Well... He's gonna do Petoxapex, sure. Actually, I should probably keep the trick just to be, you know, completely safe here. I'll be right back. So I have another game right here. I lost to this player while testing. He ended up sweeping me with a Dragon Dance Dragapult. So what I want to do is obviously win this time, but I have to get plays right against Komo'o because I ended up Shadow Balling into it last time, which was really problematic. His Gengar was also a Destiny Bond, which ended up picking up a really crucial kill on, I think, my Crawdont. Maybe it was my own Komo'o, I can't remember, but anyway. I think the best thing to do is lead off with Kamoa, as he ends up leading off with Arcanine. He did this last time too, and I think here I would do want to get up Rox. I don't think he was player off, Willow Wisp is fine, because obviously my attack doesn't care about that. He ended up going hard Gengar from what I remember, so I'm going to Earthquake, as he's Teleport. Okay, so it's probably Teleport Heavy Duty Boots or something like that. Out comes Kamoa. Well, I'm burned, actually, so body press is still weakened by that. Yeah, I forgot that's how that works. My bad. Um, what do I want to do about this, then? Because it is an issue. Maybe I should make Zero or a player off, but... I don't want to lose to this guy twice. Let's go ahead and... I think just Iron Defense, maybe. No, that's probably not the best idea, but we'll try it. As he does get a Brox. I don't know if he has Toxic. He didn't show that last time. But anyway, I'm going to go right for a body press. As he's going to iron defense. I'm doing 14. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. I'm just going to go hard Gengar. Like, I don't want to pivot around this thing. As he goes for iron defense. Uh, let's just lock it into one move. As he does go for the trick. I do trick Ferrothorn, which is pretty nice for me here. Just, I, I would have rather tricked the Kamo, obviously. But honestly, this not being locked in might be the better bet. Just makes it a bit harder against Dragapult, but I have to make sure not to lose to Dragon Dance again. If I actually hit a Focus Blast, my Zera Aura just has a ton of fun. I think I'm going to try it. Yeah, that's so good. Obviously, I'm a lot weaker now, but I think that's okay. I don't think it's the end of the world. I'm going to go for a Shadow Ball here. I doubt you go hard, Komoo. So I knock that out. He goes Gengar. This was Scarf Trick last time, which Corviknight does not care about. I can literally take your hit and just roost it off. I do play around with spitav drops, which I really hate, but we're going to hope that I don't have to worry about that. Maybe I should try to defog, just to have the Gengar for the Komo'o in case I need it. That might be the smartest thing to do. Yeah, I should try to defog here. Just because I have to have good ways to revenge this. So let's go ahead and U-turn. Not having player off is such a pain, by the way. I wish I did. But, yeah, we're going to go Beware. And I want to say the play is close. If I lock any of these moves, I lose to Dragapult. But if I don't lock any of those moves, I lose to what's in front of me right now, which is such a problem. 
So here's what, what I'm thinking. We're going to go for double edge. I didn't knock him out, which is perfect, because now I get to double in the Corviknight. And I'm not in a losing position here. Okay, that's probably a losing position. I think I'm making the Zero or a player off. Komo'o is too big of a threat to my team. So he would go for Flamethrower here, right? I guess because I'm dying and Gengar is going to be dying to hazards anyway, I might as well just sack that. Wait, he was Mono Air Slash. Alright, fine. Takes 35. It's kind of forced to recover in this position, which is pretty okay. Yeah, I guess I might as well get up my hazards. We know he's Mono Air Slash now, which is good. It would be funny if he showed a flamethrower now, but I don't think he will. Actually, let's go for U-turn. In case he goes out into the Arcanine here. He does go Gengar though, which is strange. I'm going to be able to get my thing back in, and I think I'm doubling. Now, I can't make that double because it doesn't actually do anything, because Arcanine should be faster than me. I'm going to knock off. Okay, so that's a double down. Is that a good double down for me? I think I lose, no matter what, to either Komo'o or Dragapult. Like, I, I don't see myself beating either. Goes to Dragapult here. I shouldn't die to this just yet, but I'm going to go for Darkest Lariat. Yeah, as he goes Togekiss. Now I'm going to be in range next time. That's such a pain. <laughs> I have Iron Head, dude. So if you don't flinch me to death, you're actually losing your Togekiss here and risking the game, kind of. I still think he wins no matter what. Really, we're doing this, dude. You're going to get crit eventually. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, just attack. And I have to break through or else it's over. Yeah, that's it. Because I can Aqua Jet here, but it's not going to be enough. Goes hard Kamo. He clicks body press, right? Yeah, I can try to boost up alongside him, but he beats me 1v1 due to this the thing. I guess it might actually come down to who crits first. No, I, I, I definitely don't do damage, and he just crit me immediately. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be that. I don't think I'm making the zero or a player off just for this. I'll be right back. So I have another game right here. My opponent has a Noivern, which is definitely a cool mon. I think that Weavile is definitely the biggest threat to my team, just because of Ice Shard priority and the fact that if it is a low kick, Crowdont really doesn't deal with it, unless it's in range of Aqua Jet. So I think the thing to do is lead off with... Okay, Gengar is really good. I have to keep that in mind. Don't lose Gengar. <laughs> We're going to lead off with the Corviknight or the... Beware, I think, because I want to lead off with something that does well against the Stunfisk. And I think Beware can also beat Rillaboom, so we're gonna do this here. Yeah, this is fine. I should be able to double edge. I don't think I died to superpower due to my ability. I'm not gonna calc it, I'm just gonna click. <laughs> like, he doesn't have a normal resist. I want Beware to click double edge here and see what it can do. If he goes for a U-turn, somebody else has to take it. That did a lot of damage. That's really good for me, and I'm just gonna click it again here. I still don't think I die. It does unfortunately paralyze my Beware, which isn't ideal, but I guess it's fine. I kind of like the core though, like he has Grassy Terrain plus the Stunfisk Stealth Rocks. That's kind of nice. I actually need this thing weakened, so please break through Beware. He's going to click Rocks, obviously, and I don't get my damage. That's really bad. Because now he's going to Discharge twice here to 2 hit Kiyomi and... Or Earth Power, one of the two. Oh, that didn't even 2 hit KO, never mind. Do I get put in range here? I do. I could break through the other turn, that would have been great, but I would have had to break through twice to knock him out, to be fair, so it's really not that big of a deal. I don't know what he's going to do, though. Like, I'm just trying to set up Gengar in the end, but I'm not risking Corviknight because, oh, I actually lived. Because I needed for Trick Room Hatterene. Anyway, how healthy is Rillaboom? 34. That should be plus 2 Aqua Jet range. He would go to either Clef or Noivern. I could try to defog in front of what's in front of me right now. I guess we will. Like, I don't think this beats me. I know I said I didn't want to risk it against Hatterene, but what actually breaks me here, right? Like, it doesn't have anything. This is going to go for a fire move, so I might as well try to predict it. Alex, let's think about that. Actually, Komo'o is bad. Yeah, never mind. I don't need Komo'o. I will risk Komo'o. Hurricane. So he's trying to hacks my Corviknight already. Like... 
Okay, if that's how you want to play it, then sure. I think he might not have... Can we talk about how Komo'o took that, by the way? Like, that's a hurricane. I don't know if it's not super strong or anything. Anyway, I, this is what I'm supposed to be countering right here. So I wanted in range of Crowdont. We actually did get the flinch too, which is pretty lucky, I have to admit. I don't know if he had Nuzzle or Mystical Fire, but... I'm just gonna stay in this time, like... I guess I could slow U-turn too, as he, he only has Hurricane, which isn't gonna do anything for him. I want a player off here. I guess if he is a Draco, it's not worth staying in. I should ship him a bit more before trying to do that. As he goes through the U-turn. Yeah, like, I didn't want to take a Draco there if player off doesn't kill. It looks like he might be a little bit more of a bulky variant. That's Bandit. Okay, good to know. The Bandit will not be able to take on my Sludge Wave here. He doesn't have a Sludge Wave counter. So actually, I think Gengar does just win this game because he gave me Stunfisk. Yeah, the fact that I was able to actually knock out Stunfisk with Beware was huge. Should I do a Stunfisk video? Is that something you guys want to see? <laughs> that could be fun, like just a fun Stunfisk video before the DLC releases. I don't mind. So I don't know who he wants to go to. I guess he has to go Noivern, right? So out comes Noivern. I could stay in. I don't really see why I shouldn't, like... Corvinet's low. I don't want to risk the game against this. I don't even... That's going to put me in range of Ice Shard, obviously, but... I don't know how concerning that really is to me. Like, once I get rid of this, I'm pretty sure I'm good to go. Because I got another KO here, and he can't do anything after that. He has to go Weavile. I guess he could predict me switching out, but I'm just going to sack Corviknight, which is the best mid-ground. Okay. Um, weird decision. I don't know why you capped Corviknight- I mean, the Noivern over this mon, but... Yeah, out comes Weavile. It's going to go for Ice Shard, which I don't really care about. I'm not going to try to switch out on it either. It's not worth my time. All I have to do here is get this in. I want to say Rillaboom's in range like we talked about, so I'm going to SD up in the Aqua Jet through his team. Or I, just, I guess I'll just attack immediately. That's the safer thing to do. Sacks Noivern. Guts in Rillaboom, but I have enough tools to beat his team from this position. All I have to do here is click... The Komo'o button, actually. Go right for body press. He should actually be faster, depending on how bulky he is. His leftovers went off first, but I don't think that matters, right? I think that he knocks me out in theory. I go Gengar, Sludge Wave, and then use Hera to kill the Weavel. Didn't even knock me out, so I'm going to be able to kill the Weavel using whoever I want. I think we'll give the kill to... To Zeroera. If he does opt to, you know try to do this and yeah we'll click plasma fists here and pick up the w okay so we do pick up another win which is great and i'll be right back so i have another game right here against a pretty standard hyper offense team i definitely think that zero aura can end game him but i need to not take too many life orb hits he also does not have a ghost resist which is really good for me okay so he does lead dragapult i was thinking he might lead clef or hippo but I mean, I do have a Corviknight after all. It is Willow Hex, though. That's really bad. Is it Substitute, though? That's the important thing. If it's Sub, that's a problem. If it just goes for Hex, I honestly don't care very much. Like, it's not the end of the world. And I can get in Gengar here to Shadow Ball. Now, the thing is... No, I have to Shadow Ball. I could Sludge Wave predicting the Clefable or even Trick here, but I need to keep the speed control, I feel, so... Yeah, like, I could have Sludge Waved into this. If I get this bit after up, though, that's good. But as you can see, Shadow Ball does not do damage, which is why I kind of wanted to Sludge Wave, but I didn't opt to do that. If he's going to teleport, I would rather just Shadow Ball immediately. Because if I give up momentum here, then that's really problematic too, so... I think... Um, if he Zen Headbutts immediately, that's bad. Should I actually make the Corviknight play? Because I don't know if Komo'o can take these hits, so yeah. He does go for the Zen Head, but I don't think that's Banded, and we're gonna go Komo'o on this Pyra Ball. If he goes for the Zen Head, but again, good call, dude. But I don't think you're risking my Corbinet Roosting here for no reason. I don't think you would want that. I guess U-Turn is a good mid-ground, but that still also gives me the Roost. I don't know, should I just not risk the Komo'o for the 21% Corbinet? I think the Sack might matter. And I can also Roost it up on, like, Hippo or maybe his, so I'm gonna risk it here. 
Okay, well that got really scary. Um, I need to not get flinched. Hmm. So he would go for his end headbutt, right? Let's outplay him a bit. Maybe I can bait him into high jumping, kicking into Gengar. What do you guys think? No, he would be Zen Headbutt, Sucker Punch, Parable. I don't think he can actually touch this Mon unless he has High Jump Kick, which I don't think he does. So I'm going to knock off here. I think I did play myself into the advantage just by making this pivot. I think he's Zen Headbutt, Parable, Sucker Punch. I don't think he has High Jump Kick or U-Turn or any of that. And if he does, then I don't think he would click it anyway, because I, I might be baiting him into clicking it and go Gengar. But yeah, this worked out brilliantly. He's going to go Rotom Heat, which is going to get destroyed, yeah. Okay. So we managed to get around that thing quite well, which I'm happy about. Now he's going to go Corviknight. Okay, I thought it would be Dragapult. I can't stay in, because if he is Body Press, I don't want to lose too much health here. He is Body Press. Perfect. I still want to keep my Scarf, so I'm going to go for Shadow Ball. We do get the Spit Up Drop into Hippo, too, meaning I do a 2 at KO it now. But yeah, like, no, if I let Teleport Clefable... If I let teleport Clefable earlier, if I let Clefable teleport earlier, that would have been really bad for me. Um, he's gonna protect, but... Actually, Beware covers everything. Yeah, like, it covers both of his options there. I think... Ah, he did go hard Dragapult. It was a good play for sure. I didn't think he would risk it, but... Here we are. He risked it, and it worked out. Goes for will o -Wisp. Yeah, that's not happening, dude. He could Hex here for all I care. Like, I honestly don't mind. And then I'm going to get in my Zeraora and go right for a Play Rough. On the Hippo. Maybe he thinks that I don't have Grass Knot. Let's see. Come on, dude. I'm not Grass Knot. Okay, he's going to switch out. <laughs> this is kind of a pain now. Because this is my win con, and I need to predict with it eventually. Yeah, he's, he's getting every player out against this Mon, which is really good for him. But I think I'm still in the lead here, because what I'm doing is forcing damage on Dragapult, which is going to open up the door for SD Crawdont in the end. Which I will be able to set up against Cinderace. I want to get a kill with this, though, before I die. Like, that's the important part. So what do I do with this? I really want to get a KO. Okay, there we go. There's my KO. Outcome is this. I'm gonna go Kamo. Oh, it's never worth going Crowdont anymore. If it gets Powerball burned or anything like that, I'm gonna lose, so let's just not mess with that. Is a Dragapult in range of plus two Aqua Jet at 66? I don't think it is. Crowdont against Dragapult. Yeah, it's not, so I need to hit that thing a bit more. He's gonna Powerball this time, I think. No, he goes Corviknight, which made, like, no sense. I'm gonna go for Iron Defense. Actually, let's just Body Press again. He has Brave Bird. Okay. Didn't think that would be the option there. Let's go ahead and do this. Ah, good play. He's gonna have Draco on it. I, if I Earthquake right there, I would have won with the Crowd Aunt. I think I still might be able to pull it out, though. Because I can force him to Draco. Then I go Zeraora. Double down there is good for me. The next best thing to do is bring out... No, I think I've played it to where it's actually not good. Because I have to get the correct Pokemon in right now. We'll see. Maybe if I can get Dragapult chipped down with sand, I can still do this, but I, I think I messed up. Now, Crowdont might still be able to win. If I can SD up twice, that would be perfect, but I don't think that's happening. So what I'm hoping he does is go Dragapult, right? That would be the best case scenario for me. Oh, man, he switched in Dragapult multiple times. All I had to do was call it. Goes to Corviknight. Okay. I'm going to get in my Beware. Brave Bird hurts, but I can take it. Okay. 
Okay, good, we got it right. Go through roost. I'm gonna double in my Gengar. Yep. Hit him with Shadow Ball here. Cinderace, and it actually gets Spit after dropped. I think I'm gonna take the hit with Crawdon this time. And if I get burned, I lose. But just don't Power Ball burn, and I should win. Goes for Sucker, okay. And now I get a free knockoff. And I think I win the game. Yeah, okay. So he's gonna do that, and then I'm pretty sure I wrap it up using... That actually did a lot, by the way. But I'm pretty sure all I have to do is click Aqua Jet. Or do I keep this Mon for Corviknight? I'm thinking here. I'm gonna keep it around. Or is the close combat better? I don't know. I'm just gonna Aqua Jet. I think I might still lose, depending on how he plays it. He would click Draco, right? I think if I Jet, then go Gengar to try to beat this, I still lose the game. Because he would go Corviknight, just Roost, Brave Bird, and then I die, right? I don't know if I can win. Do I go Beware and then go Gengar and try to keep this around? I don't think that's going to be a winning play either. Maybe it is. That's my best bet, I think. So here I Shadow Ball. If he hard switches it in, though, I need Spit after drop, so that's the problem. If he sacks it, though, I think spamming Shadow Ball and then a knockoff will be enough. But if he hard switches it in and then doesn't get Spit after drop, I think he does win the game. So we'll see how it plays. But I think he probably has it. It, it just comes down to how much my crowd onto is going to do to him in the end. I have to hope that if he sacks this here, then I have to hope that the Shadow Ball can kill. He does go hard into it, so what I have to do is click Shadow Ball until I get a Spit After Drop. If he doesn't roost though, that's the thing. He still loses, so... And there's the Spit After Drop I needed immediately, okay. So now basically he has to sack it and then come back in, but I think that Shadow Ball plus crowd onto is too much. I get another one immediately. <laughs> Yeah, so he has to sack, come back in, but I don't think Corviknight wins. Oh wait, he can try to pressure stall me. We're gonna try to do something here. Don't attack this turn, please just don't attack- actually, let's Shadow Ball one more time. No, we're going to try this. Do I... Corviknight might win it, because if he roosts and doesn't get spit after drop, then he's going to end up at full and crowd on. Yeah, I have to go crowd on. And if he attacks, he wins, I think, but... I don't think he's going to attack. Yeah, this is the goal, because now what I'm going to do is click knock off here. And then basically, what I want happening is I'm going to trick him and hope he roosts. There we go, okay. And now he's locked into Roost. I had to try to do that. If he attacked into Crowdon switching in, I think he did win, because he would have been at full and had no reason to Roost, but I'll be right back. Okay, so we got a Jellyfish running a Jellison team, which is definitely interesting. I think that Crowdon can win if I get Chip on Hydreigon, but Ferrothorn is kind of a pain too. I definitely think Shadow Ball is really good, but that could actually be my way of forcing damage on Hydreigon now that I think about it. We're leading off with Kamo'o, as he does lead off with the Ferrothorn. Thorn. I think initially I should go for Stealth Rocks. He might stay into knockoff, but I think if anything he goes Sigilith or Jellicent. He might even have a Dazzling Gleam on the Jellicent, you never know. He does stand to go for Elite Sheet. Okay, I thought it would be knockoff. I actually want a hard pivot in Beware. And what we're going to do is go right for Darkest Lariat on the Jellicent, I think. Yep, do a nice 77, nice damage, and... Here, I think he would go back to Ferrothorn, but I don't want him recovering, so I'm going to stay in. As now Sigilyph comes in, right? And now this is a problem, I think. The best way to do this is... So he would go for Heat Wave here, right? Do I need Corviknight? Corviknight's good against Hedragon to, like, U-turn on it. I guess he could click the Psychic move, too. I'm considering actually just leaving in Beware. It doesn't do a ton against what he has left, like... Everything outspeeds it. It does th actively threaten Pharaoh, though. And a close combat is very good, but I think I'll stay in. 
I actually was able to hang on, so that's gonna die, yeah. So Bellwear picks up two really nice KOs. Against like the two underrated Pokemon in his team being Sigilyph and Jellicent. I really like Sigilyph, I wouldn't really use Jellicent, but yeah, we're going to keep it in one more time. I want to find out whether this is a Life Orb or Bulk Up and whatnot. I think he might actually Bulk Up here, but Darkest Lariat would put him in range of Gengar's Shadow Ball, I believe, so... Maybe not after the leftovers, I might have to click Sludge Wave if I, you know, don't kill the Shadow Ball. So he has leftovers, good to know. I don't know if he has player F though. Because he has leftovers, I don't think he has player F. People typically run player F on a Life Orb variant, so... We're gonna try something here and go right for Body Press. I don't think he has player F. I think he's like Bulk Up, Plasma Fist, Close Combat, Knockoff, where he's like... Four attacks, but with a grass not knock off instead of player off. So we just bulk up, but I don't think he beats me here. He has player off. Okay, well I would have lived the initial one anyway. Now I have to go Gengar and the best play is Sludge Wave. So he goes Corviknight. Okay, that's fine. I'm trying to set up Shadow Ball, but it's not really working out, obviously. Goes for a U-turn. He's going to go to Corp uh, Zero Aura again. And I think what I'm going to try to do is... He goes Pharah. I actually probably shouldn't have U-turned. We're going to do this. And just CC. Do a very nice amount. I'm happy with that. I think I have to hope this kills though. If this doesn't kill, I lose. It did. Okay, good. So now, the Zero would live Aqua Jet, because if it does, that's a bit of a problem. I think I might have lost anyway. Maybe, I don't know, like... I was up 6-4, maybe I should have kept Kamo- Oh, but I didn't want to use Gengar first, I feel as though that was a losing play, but... If I can get Corviknight in range of Focus Blast, and then I hit a few of them, that could be a win con for me. That involves hitting Focus Blast though, and <laughs> that never goes well, but you never know, maybe it'll work out. The thing is, if he goes out into his Zero Aura here and I'm able to Aqua Jet it, I think that Corviknight would have an easier time. So he opts to go Corviknight, which is odd, because if I hit this, then Gengar is a problem for him. That did a ton. So that's done on entry. I think he actually loses to Sludge Wave after I Aqua Jet this thing. Yeah, he lost to Gengar. Okay. So, GG. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I think Sludge Wave would kill this. Let's just run Calx. Okay, that's a roll. That's a roll that I don't like. Um, it's a roll that we're going to have to get, because what's going to happen is I'm going to Sludge Wave, he's going to go Hydreigon. I'm going to Sludge Wave it into range of Corviknight, and then... I'm going to kill it with Corviknight, and then that dies on entry, but I have to knock this out. That's fine, I think. Uh, maybe not. That could be worse. Okay, let's actually calc here. How much does Hydreigon take? Okay, so I still have a really good shot at killing Hydreigon, meaning if he is a Life Orb, but I think he's Scar. We're gonna try to switch out. Because let's let's think about this, right? Flamethrower wouldn't knock me out, I don't think. Okay, never mind, it probably would. That's Life Orb. Um, so Flamethrower wouldn't knock me out even if I switched out and came back in. So in theory, if I were to switch out here and he locked Flamethrower, I would win, because I would Sludge Wave his Flamethrower wouldn't knock me out. If he tried to go Zara and then come back in, this would be in range. So the best place to go Corviknight. He's Fire Blast though, that's what I was a bit afraid of. Because that will knock out Gengar, and he's gonna hit them. So it, it comes down to this roll right here. 52 to 61, he's at 56. And we lived a Fire Blast, I didn't think I would. And I don't think this can knock me out, and I should knock it out here. I didn't think I lived Fire Blast. I'll be right back. So I have another game right now. My opponent has a Cinderace, so I definitely need to watch out for Pyro Ball. If he does Zen Headbutt into Komo, -Oh, that is going to be an issue. Uh, Hydreigon and Komo, -Oh, man, that's kind of a yikes, because Crowdon can't really set up and sweep, but it can knock stuff off here, which could help me out. I think if I want to go for an endgame, Gengar is going to be that mon, if not Zeroura. Because I do have the player F on it now, right? We're leading off with Beware. The thing is, I do live the hit from this, and I think hitting it could be very good. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that here. Hit him up with a CC, do a very nice amount. And then I think the best play is to not risk Gengar. 
I kind of want to go Corviknight on the body press. I don't know, like, I, do I even die? That's the thing, because if I don't, I might just stay in and take the KO, but I think at minus one, I probably would. Hmm, I wouldn't. If you clicked Iron Defense, I think he would hang on, though, which is a bit concerning. So that does 60 to 70 through my f ability. I'm going to stay in. That's not going to take that very well. And I'm just going to stay in here. I think that might have been a low roll, actually, because Clefable's Fizz Def isn't super great. And I've had this calc with Gallade before. They have the exact same attack stat. Okay, that's a roll down the middle. But if you did Protect here, it would be a... Yeah, it's going to be a roll. I'm going to go for it. Let's see. It's 50 to 60. 51 to 60. So the odds aren't bad here. Like, it's about 50-50. I guess the crit works, too. I think... It looks like it was about 40-60 in his favor, but when you factor in crit chance, it's basically 50-50, I guess. I mean, it's still kind of in his favor, but not by a lot. So we get rid of Clef, and we have Komo'o low, which is really good. I think that Zero Aura is definitely going to be my best bet, but yeah, I'm just going to leave this in again. As he goes right for the Pirate Ball, and then I'm going to get in my Komo'o here and get up rocks. Or immediately Body Press. Actually, let's, let's go for rocks. Or Body Press, okay. Couldn't cancel. I'll get up Brox here and then try to get in Crawdont after, depending on what moves he has. He goes for a bulk up again. Are you trying to Zen Hood put me twice? Like, what's going on? So, bulk up, Zen Hood, but Pyro Ball, Sucker Punch. Crawdont will be able to revenge this. Do I suck off Kamo'o, though? I feel like Kamo'o might have uses, but I don't think it's that good. I did get flinched, so. It shouldn't matter. I think Crawdont still is going to do this for me. I won't die to Parable. So I go for a knockoff here. Oh, he has Hydra. So he doesn't have Sucker Punch then, meaning that that flinch might actually cost me some stuff. I didn't think he would be Hydra. I thought he would be Sucker Punch, but anyway. I'm going to Shadow Ball here, pick that Mon off, and go from there. That was really bad though. I could have definitely taken advantage of that more. I need my... Zero Aura to come through for me. I need to find out whether this is Scarf. I think if it's Scarf, I might just guaranteed lose, but we'll see. Yeah, so I should have gone out into the other guy earlier, so he's not Scarf. Which is good, because that's the one chance I have here, him not being Scarf, and then my Zera beating his. So that's that. We're gonna switch this in. Go right for a player off. Knocks out Komo, and then I think it comes down to Zara versus Zara. Which I'm hoping that I can win the exchange, but I'm not very confident. Um, that won't matter as long as I can hit this one, ideally. <laughs> okay, good. And then basically what I'm going to do is, I think, switch out into my Gengar, depending on what the Zara is, because I need him in range of close combat. I am Life Orb. Oh, okay, well I'm just going to Plasma Fist to this and see what's up. It did hang on, which is really bad. But I I think if I win the speed tie, I might be able to sweep with close combat. I'm going to switch out here. I might just knock off, though. What do you guys think? Should I switch or not? I think it's worth a shot. Because close combat's not going to kill anyway, so I might as well try it. As he goes for close combat, perfect. Because now what I'm going to do is hit a Shadow Ball here. If he stays in, that's fine. If he goes Hydreigon, I think that's fine, too. Corviknight's is dead on entry. So he should sack Corviknight, then go Hydreigon. Yeah, that's his best play. I should have Sludge Waved. Ah, I should have Sludge Waved. I think I would have won, because that would have probably been in range, dude. I think I threw. I should have predicted the Corviknight sack. Oh, wait, but Corviknight came in. So I should have Focus Blasted. Wait, I lived and got the spit after drop. I think I won. <laughs> no, it still comes down to the speed tie. Because I'm going to Shadow Ball here. I will be able to get a Shadow Ball into this, but then I have to win a Speed Tie with my Zero Order to knock it out. So it literally comes down to is the Speed Tie right here. Which I'm going to lose. Come on, Zero Order. You're better than his, right? You're lower on health, but you're the Life Orb one. Nah, he got it. <laughs> okay. All right, this will be the last game right here. I definitely think that Crawdon can win if I get damage on Komo'o, but... 
He also has Aegis Lash, which probably has speed. So if it's in the shield form, it will be able to outspeed me and then knock me out. Because my Aqua Jet's not going to do enough to that in shield form. I think that Zero Aura of my own is definitely a good endgame, but I don't want it to come down to another speed tile like it just did. Gengar, if I can predict, is really good, but we're leading off with Beware. I actually really want to hit this for my own Gengar, so we're going to stay in as he goes ahead and does that. And then I think Corviknight covers both him staying in and the Aegis Slash. This might go for Taunt, honestly. I don't honestly know, but I'm going to go for U-Turn. And then bring in Gengar here. And I think the best thing to do is Sludge Wave. In case he goes Kamo. -O. Although, do you guys think he would? I'm just, I'm just going to Sludge Wave and see what he does. If he stays in in Psychics, that's really bad, but he tries to get in Kamo. -O. So we knock that out, which is really good for Crowdont. I think Crowdont does have a shot now. I'm going to try to get in my Kamo, I think. If he doubles in Mew. Okay, well. He's going to start getting up spikes. Yeah, that's a that's an issue. <laughs> I can't really let that happen. So I think the best thing to do is go hard into Gengar on a knockoff. That was probably a bit premature of me. I shouldn't have done that so fast, but... Okay, we'll try to break with this and then go for an endgame with Zara then. If that's what it takes to win, then I'll go for that. But yeah, I was hoping he would try to get up another spike there and then I could try to Shadow Bolt through, but that's not happening. So what we're going to do is Aqua Jet this and then hope that I can win a Speed Tide for this game. Right here, the best place to go, Kamo. Because I won't die to Player F even if he has it right now. So then I go Corviknight. Goes for Thunder and misses. Okay. Kind of a yikes. Goes Erotum. I do need damage on this too. Okay, we did get the U-turn. Let's go ahead and get up rocks. Clefable. Combine Thunder doesn't even kill me. That's kind of funny. And I get my thing off. Okay, that's really good. Let's go ahead and Bandit Double Edge here. Does Hard Pivot and Aegis Slash, which is his best play, so good job. Okay, let's do this. Go right for a Plasma Fist. He's not going to go hard into Zero Aura. He's going to go Rotom or Clef. Or just leave it in, like that's the other play. So now I think it comes down to... I could spam Double Edge to beat the Clef. He goes Zero Aura, so he's committing to the speed time now. Maybe I win it this time. Wow, I actually won it, okay. So that should be a game in my favor, and we can end it off there. So we lose a speed tie to lose a game, and we win the other one. That's fair enough. I don't mind that. He should try to switch out, but, like, it's not going to make a difference. The cleft being at 1, I mean 35, is too low. So what I do here is bring this in, go right for body press. Just spam that base. Actually, the best place to iron defense to ensure that I kill the um, clef in one hit, right? Yeah. So that's going to be the game right there. Because I don't want the clef soft boiling, because I'm not actually confident that Beware Oko's it, so... I don't want to have to like hard switch in Beware, predicting him to like soft world or whatever, because if he did Moonblast, that would be kind of bad. But anyway, that's going to be the live. We end up at 5 and 2. Could have been 6 and 1 if I did win the other speed type, but I did win the one in the second time around, so it's fair enough. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.